Hi, I'm Canadian gynecologist, Dr. Christina Dervatis. I practice in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, which previously has been called Talking IUC with Dr. D. Today, I'm renaming and rebranding things a little bit, and we're gonna call this Talking LARC with Dr. D. LARC stands for Long Acting Reversible Contraception, and it's considered a first line contraceptive option because LARC options have one of the lowest chances of pregnancy at less than 1%. Previously in Canada, the only LARC available was the IUD, both hormonal and copper. Now, recently, uh, in late 2020, we actually now have access to another form of LARC uh, in Canada called the subdermal implant. Uh, the brand name that's available here is Nexplanon. And so both the IUD and the subdermal implant are considered first line contraception um, for basically all sexually active patients, regardless of their age, um, regardless of whether or not they've had previous children, regardless of their future fertility desi desires. Um, and so in light of this new um, option available in Canada, today's video is going to be about the implant. Now I should mention that although the implant is new in Canada, it's been around for many, many years in other countries. So we have um, lots of data on this option and uh, we know that it's a safe option to offer our patients. So the implant is a very small, flexible plastic rod, which I'll just demonstrate to you here. It's very small and soft. And just for fr frame of reference, basically, smaller than the size of a toothpick kind of thing. Um, and how it works is that this small plastic rod contains uh, the progesterone etonorgestrel, 68 milligrams. And this is slowly released into the bloodstream um, over a period of up to three years. So three years of contraception with the subdermal implant. Now, um, in terms of where or how it's inserted, um, it's a quick office procedure that takes, again, less than five minutes or so. Um, the site for the, um, in, for the insertion is, I'm just gonna try and demonstrate here um, and not look at my sad muscles here, but um, basically about five centimeters in from the elbow and a few centimeters, three centimeters down so that it's just below the biceps muscle. So it sits there just underneath the skin. Um, it's um, inserted by putting just a little bit of local freezing, and then there's an insertion device that very quickly um, is able to slide um, the rod quite gently under the skin. Um, and really the puncture site is so small that it just requires a Band-Aid. There's no suturing at all. Um, and then basically um, when this is underneath the skin, you shouldn't really feel that it's there or notice it. No one else really um, to look at the arm should really notice it, it doesn't stick out. So um, it's very discreet and it's really, really effective because once it's inserted, the user does not have to remember to do anything. It's just there providing worry-free contraception. And in studies looking at the first year of typical use of the uh, subdermal implant, the pregnancy or the chance of pregnancy was as low as 0.05%. So not just a less than 1% chance of pregnancy, but far lower than that even. So it's very, very effective. Now, um, some things to note about the um, the subdermal implant. It is considered a systemic hormonal contraception. So it works by releasing hormone into the bloodstream and it is progesterone only. So it's different than the birth control pill, which would contain both estrogen and progesterone if you're using a combined pill. So this is again, a progestin only. So um, very few contraindications to using this. So really the only patients who would have a contraindication to using um, to using the implant would be someone who has a contraindication to using a progesterone containing contraceptive. Now, um, it's important to note that although it lasts for up to three years, it can be removed at any time. It does not have any impact on future fertility. Um, so that's another bonus. Now let's talk about possible side effects with regards to the subdermal implant. Um, and this information that I'm about to present to you comes directly from the, uh, 
drug product monograph. So from Merck, the manufacturer. So with regards to um, vaginal bleeding, which is a number one side effect that patients are often concerned about, it's important to note that more than half of all patients will have almost no or very infrequent bleeding. So many, many patients, up to 22% may enjoy no menstrual bleeding at all. And um, many patients, up to 34%, may have very infrequent bleeding. So again, over half of patients, very little bleeding to have to deal with. Um, more than 20 to 25% may actually have issues with frequent or prolonged bleeding. And sometimes bleeding issues and breakthrough bleeding issues can be a bothersome side effect that might um, lead a patient to remove the implant. Um, so it's just important to have a heads up on that. And sometimes we can't tell what the bleeding is gonna be like, obviously, until the patient is actually trying the device and um, we get a sense of what their periods are like. Now, because this is a systemic contraceptive that works by releasing hormone into the bloodstream, there can sometimes be some other side effects. Um, again, these are reported from the product monograph, but they mention uh, the possibility of headache, uh, the possibility of weight gain, um, the possibility of acne, breast pain, mood changes, um, and also was listed abdominal pain. Now, the vast majority of patients do not have these side effects. These are just the possible side effects. Now, with regards to the possibility of weight gain, uh, because I know that's a big concern for a lot of my patients and a lot of viewers online have commented about uh, the issue of possible weight gain with hormonal contraception, um, the manufacturers of Nexplanon in their product monograph um, state that the amount of weight gain attributable to the implant is unknown. Um, so there's not a definitive link necessarily um, to say that every patient who tries the implant is going to gain weight, but there may be a ch chance of a small degree of weight gain. Um, on this topic, I do want to mention um, once again that there has not been actually any scientific evidence or study evidence to show weight gain with either the hormonal IUD, um, copper IUD, or the birth control pill. Um, the only other contraceptive that has been shown um, otherwise to be associated with weight gain is the Depo Provera shot. Now, with regards to possible side effects uh, related to the actual insertion procedure itself, these again are not common, but might include some redness at the area, um, a small degree of bruising or a little buildup of blood that we call a hematoma that would resolve on its own, um, possibly a small degree of pain at the uh, injection site. Um, and now in terms of um, more uh, serious site related complications such as deep tissue injections or intermuscular injections or the uh, implant itself um, finding its way into the bloodstream and traveling, these sorts of um, potential complications are exceptionally rare. Um, another point that I wanted to bring up um, while I have this opportunity is to emphasize that the subdermal implant um, obviously does not pr protect against sexually transmitted infection. So if you're using this um, as an option, um, you do still need to use condoms for STI prevention if you're with a new partner. So that's all for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Um, please stay tuned and subscribe to the channel uh, to learn more about this topic in the future. And I'm definitely gonna be continuing to add videos on a regular basis. Also, don't forget to uh, check out my Instagram feed at Dr. Underscore Dervatis um, for other uh, great information and quick videos regarding um, both the IUD and now the subdermal implant. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.